In this video, we're going to explore the most important chapter in the richest man in Babylon. Yo, what's up everybody? How you doing? This is your coach, Renz, and I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank my new Patreons for joining Patreon. I appreciate you guys. I ask that everybody go over, you know, hey, support the channel on Patreon, but also support it by liking and subscribing to the YouTube channel and everybody on Facebook. Come on over. So I appreciate everybody. Hey, so we're talking about the richest man in Babylon. We already covered the man who desired gold. Now we're talking about the actual story of the richest man in Babylon. We're talking about Arkad. We're talking about how those men who, who desired gold decided they was going to meet up with Arkad. Since they went to school with him, they were old chums with him. So they went to school and they knew him. So they decided, to, like, hey, let's go find out. Since we've never sought out knowledge, let's go seek out the knowledge of how Arkad became the richest man in Babylon. So the story picks up with them going to talk to Arkad, who is known as the richest man in Babylon. And he was more than welcome, more than happy to meet with them. We're not going to go over every detail of the story because I want you guys to go and read the book. You can download it for free. But go out there and read this book all right, so that you can gain an understanding. But I want to break it down into today's format and today's mindset. I've got to tell you guys, if you don't have a great desire to become wealthy, then this is frivolous for you. Don't even listen to this video. Just stop, stop, stop. Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. But if you have a desire to build wealth, a desire to pass it along, the desire to make sure that when you come to the point of retirement that you don't have to worry about money, that you don't have to worry about your children having to pay for your lifestyle and take care of you, that you want to have enough funding to be able to handle your own life after work, then this is something that you should listen to. This is something you need to gain an understanding of. So, as like I said, they picked up with them going to visit Arcade. I got my notes down here, all right? And the thing about it, about, the thing about wealth, wealth is when you have more money than you can spend. And even though others will believe that it was, a, it was it's luck or it's fate, because his friends like, why does fickle fate choose you? You were no more of a better athlete. You were no more of a better student. You were no more better anything than we were. But fickle fate has chosen you. And he tells them how fate is usually the ruin of people. Luck is usually the ruin of people. Look at how many people win the lottery, but then their lives are ruined. Whatever your habits were and are now, and it's causing you, that, that's what's causing you to be in your current situation. So when, if you all of a sudden acquire funding, you usually will lose that funding. Even those who have acquired funding and then their generations come along, usually by the fourth generation, they've lost more than half of what the originator created. Why? Because they never learned the rules of gold, how to make money, how to earn. Very few families have existed for decade after decade after decade, generation after generation after generation, and have grown in wealth because they've been able to pass along that information, pass along the teachings. Most of them who grow up with money usually don't earn learn how to earn money those who all of a sudden get a windfall windfall and it's unearned gold usually don't it's very few people who can take earn earn income and turn it into more i believe i'm one of those kind of people <laughs> so if anybody wanted to donate a check of eight hundred thousand a million dollars whatever it is i'll show you how to turn that money into more money how to increase the income very few people have that ability um, most people who are probably even listening to this video, if you got it, the first thing you would do is pay some bills, buy a house, you know, pay off some, get your, pay your things off on your credit, those sorts of things, put some in savings. But after a time, it'll dwindle down and you'll be back in your same situation. This book is here to help you get out of that situation. I am here to help you to get out of that mindset, that situation. Um, because you're condition is based on what you've learned and what you've observed, what you've seen from your family members, what you've seen from your culture. You know, I was looking at people today and realizing that these three children that I was looking at who were growing up with their mom are probably going to more than likely not have great financial responsibilities, uh, financial intelligence, I should say. They're probably not going to. And it's a sad statement to have to realize that, that that's what's going on. I, I'm that kind of person where I see people and I look at their current conditioning that I can tell from what I can tell and deduce what their path, their life path is going to more than likely be. 
And this is not just something off guessing or intuition. I've witnessed it, I've watched people. I've watched people in my family who, when they were small children, I was saying, this one is going to go to jail. This one is going to struggle financially. This one is going to struggle emotionally simply because I witnessed and watched how they were being raised and how I knew how the parent was and I knew exactly how they would turn out. Now they're in their 20s, 30s and they're exactly what I predicted. It's not that I put that energy on them. It's not that I prophesied their life. It's just witnessing their environment easily shows, showed me what they were going to more than likely turn into. Now they can make those changes and I did all that I could as they was growing up to make those changes, to help them, to guide them, to put something different in their life. And most of them now that they're in their 20s and 30s, they're willing to listen. So they're making changes. So they're getting better. That's what I want you to do. I want you to be able to make changes and get better. Make a difference in your life so you can make a difference in somebody else's life and have better and may create a better environment for your children. So luck, fate, it destroys people. You have to learn to earn. Like my children, they will not just reap the windfall. They've worked in my stores for summers when they were younger. They worked during the school year. They had to learn, they learned to earn. When even before I had stores, they, they cleaned the gym. Uh, the, when I had three gyms, they cleaned those. They, they had their jars that were based on my 70, 10, 10, 10 plan to make sure that they understood from a very early age this is your necessities, this is your play money, this is your long-term savings, this is your short-term savings, and this is your investment. You divvy up your money in these formats. So they have always gained that understanding. Not that I was perfect, because it's things that I had to learn. I had to unravel years and years of conditioning myself as an adult before I got to a point where I can do this, which is not the easiest thing to do. So if you've already built up habits and you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and, uh, and uh, it's going to take you some time to unravel those things, but be willing to do the work. So he talks, so they continue with the story and um, our cat realized that he wanted to become the wealthiest man because he, he said that he recognized as a young man and don't let this dissuade you. He recognized it as a youth. Just because you're 40 or 50, it doesn't matter. You still probably have 40, 50, 60 more years of life left. And out of that 40, 50, 60 years of life, you probably have a good 20, 30, 40 years of work that you can put in, uh, that your body will be able to put in the physical work, but your mind can continuously put in the work well into your 100. So you have time. What is time but a fabrication of our mind? If you really think about it, I could give each one of you a credit plan and financial wealth building plan. And if you're willing to take the next five to 10 years to dedicate yourself to it, what is five to 10 years compared to the next 40, 50, 60 years? If you are willing to put in the five years now to build your credit and then get your financial investments going, it's an amazing thing that you can have in 10 years. In 10 years, you could be reaping benefits that greatly outweigh the income that you're currently uh, working for, trading your time in for. But you have to be willing to do it. You have to be willing to put in the effort and recognize that time, everybody has time. And Arcad realized that he had time and he had the ability to study and understand. You just then have to put forth the action. He talked about once he realized this, that he was willing to put that effort in. You have to have that definiteness of purpose in order for it to happen. And Arcad talked about how he had a definiteness of purpose that whatever the task, he was willing to do it. And you have to have that mindset as well. If you don't, you're just going to drift. You're going to drift. You know, I was watching some people today and I was just looking and noticing most people, most of these people, they're drifters. They've grown or decreased in life based on whatever life decided for them to have. They didn't create their lives. Our cat decided to create his life. You have to decide, are you going to create your life or allow others to create the life for you? 
But wealth increases the potency for all great things in life. If you want to be charitable, how much more charitable can you be if you're wealthy? If you want to feed the homeless, how many more people can you feed if you're wealthy? If you want to build monuments and skyscrapers, how many can you build if you're wealthy? If you want to help your family cure disease, how, many, how, how much more effort can be put into all these things when you have wealth? If you're religious and you want to build monuments to your religion, how many more can you build? If you have wealth, if you have mission work you want to do, how many more can you do if you have wealth? Remember, uh, Akon, he thought a billion dollars he'd be able to, he just wanted to give his grandmother lights, but realized he had to do the entire area. And then once he did the area, he wanted to go bigger, and he got a billion dollars from China. And guess what he realized very quickly? The billion wasn't going to light up Africa. It wasn't that much when it came to the project, so he had to keep going. Wealth gives you that ability to do that. Without it, you can't. So for those who believe that it's evil, no. But the love of anything other than continuously growing is evil. So because it still makes you. It causes you to dwindle, it causes you to drift, it causes you to stop growing in your life when you fall in love with a thing instead of growing and falling in love with the pursuit of anything. So, but our cat realized that that wealth has a certain kind of power that other things don't seem to have. So he decided to be wealthy. And he decided that he would put in the time and the energy of the study. Now in today's world, if you decide that you want to be wealthy, one of the first things you have to do is fix your credit. One of the second things you have to do is you have to align your budget. Because if your budget is not aligned, you will not be able to fix your credit. You will not be able to invest. The other thing you have, then after that, you have to realize that your investment needs to be at a minimum 10% of your income. And that investment needs to be in income earning investments. It cannot be in your 401ks and your, your um, IRAs and things like that because they're not going to keep up with or outpace inflation. So as inflation increases, but your 401ks and your IRAs don't keep up, you're actually losing money. You're losing money. So if you want to continue to grow money, you have to find income-based investments. And it need not be the quick, fast, and hurry. Arcad talks about how many people will invest in something looking for a high risk, high return. But instead, it's better to find a lower risk, slower return in order for you to grow your wealth. I see so many people who join programs. And these programs are, they're giving you the great story flip this house and make $30,000 on the back end. Start this MLM and make $10,000 checks, $10,000 check, get in this MLM. Don't only pay you $199 to get started, get you a website, get you some business card, get all these things, and boom. All of a sudden you get three people to join, you help those three people get three people to join, you help those three people get three people to join, you keep on doing that, create that downline, all of a sudden you got this big old downline, and you make a $10,000, you get the car, you get all these kind of things. They sell you on the big, quick, fast, and a hurry, big dollar number. When I'd rather tell you, save 10% of everything that you earn, because 10% is yours to keep. This is the big lesson he learned. Temper, this is the first lesson. 10% is yours to keep. When Algamesh came into his job and he asked Algamesh, how do you become wealthy? And they made a deal, a pact. And Algamesh told him that the first thing is 10% of all you earn is yours to keep. That's the beginning. That plants your tree of wealth. I'd rather tell you, save 10% of what you earn. Let's say you earn 50,000 a year. At the end of the year, you got, got $5,000. I'd rather take your $5,000 and either buy two tax liens, or I've taken the time over the year to increase your credit score so that you can go and get you a investment loan, a homeowner's loan buy you one or two in rental properties, depending upon the price point of the properties, your 5,000 may be enough of a down payment for one or two. Go buy you a rental property, buy it or a duplex, rent them out. I'd rather you make $1,000 a month off of an Airbnb rental property or make $500 a month off of a regular rental property or buy two tax liens, wait out the year, and then own two or three houses totally free of a mortgage unless you had to get a line of credit to fix up the houses, which still would be smaller than a mortgage. 
maybe thirty, forty thousand dollars using the house as equity. And now you're renting a house, either Airbnb or you're renting it straight rental and you're making profit. And then from the profit, lesson number two that he learned from Alchemist is you take the profit and then you reinvest the profit. And you consistently and continuously reinvest the profit until it creates a river of gold. This happened with Arcad. Alchemist came in, told him about the 10%. He saves the 10%. At the end of a year, Alchemist comes in and says, hey, did you save the 10%? He says, yes, I saved the 10%. What'd you do with the 10%? Well, I gave it to Ashmere, the bricklayer. Ashmere is gonna go over to the Phoenicians, gonna buy us some jewels, gonna bring them back, we're gonna make a whole bunch of money. We're gonna sell them for high prices. Big time, big dollar, big dollar, big dollar, big dollar. Yeah, big dollar. He said, you sent the brick maker to go and find out about jewels? You've lost your fortune. Try again next year. And sure enough, they sold him bits and pieces of glass and he lost his money. He saved again for a whole nother year. This time, he put his money with the right people. Somebody who knew the business to which he was trying to make some money off of. He gave his money to a money lender. And every year, the money lender, every quarter, the money lender paid him back the interest on that money. But then he asked him, what are you doing with that money? Oh, I have a big old feast and then I bought me a scarlet robe and then, you know, next time I'm buying me a donkey to ride. In our world today, oh, you know what? I go partying with that money. I go have dinners and trips and I take trips and everything. I buy me some nice clothes and I'm about to get that, that new BMW or that new Mercedes that came out, that Jag. You're eating the children of your money, your investment. You're eating your profit. You don't eat your profit. You have to send your profit back out so that it can make more money for you. So you buy the house, you, you set it up as an Airbnb. You make $1,700 a month off that Airbnb every month. You take that $1,700 every month and you build it up until you buy you another house and you set up another Airbnb house. And you take that money and you build it up until you buy you another Airbnb house. You get you about five Airbnb homes, each one I'm producing you around $1,500, $1,700 a month. You got five of those producing $1,500 a month you take a thousand of each one for yourself, that's five thousand a month. If you were making fifty thousand, you've replaced your income. You've replaced your income, but yet you still got another twenty five hundred dollars a month to build to buy the next house and the next one and the next one and continue your growth. Maybe you get up to ten houses and you're good. If you don't want to do an Airbnb because that takes a little bit more effort, energy, and work, then you take those. That, that first 5000 you buy your house, you rent it. That house gives you a profit of about $500. You save that whole $500 up all year. You got $6,000 at the end of the year. You take that $6,000, you go buy you another house. And you got two houses, both of them providing you $500 a month. You got, at the end of the year, now you got $12,000 that you save. You take the $12,000, you go buy you two houses from the $12,000. Now you got four houses. This is only year three. You got four houses. Four houses, all of them bring you $500 a month. At the, um, at the end of the year, that's $24,000. You go buy you four or five more houses. See how that plays? That's five years, six years later. 10 years, how many houses? Maybe you got 10 houses, 20 houses. And 10, 20 houses all paying you $500 a month. Now you can take some of that profit. Now you can take that profit and replace your income. I'd rather you build it that way than jumping and having grasshopper mining to jumping into every program that comes your way, spending $5,000 for this and $25,000 for that for something that's supposed to flip a house. And what happens is that people are watching. You take wise advice, you start building your income, building your, your wealth. Other people will watch you. And then when you do have $24,000 and you know that somebody who's been watching you and trusts you and they say, you know, this person knows how to do business, then they say, hey, I got this deal, we're gonna buy this house as a fixer up. We're gonna flip it. Now you can take those flips. You can take those flips because now you have the, the stable cash so that if you have to hold that and, and continuously pay the nut on it, you can hold it for six months. You're not in a rush, you're not in a crunch, you're not in one of those situations where, man, I'm gonna put my money into this house. If I don't flip it within 30 days, then I don't know how I'm gonna pay rent, I don't know how I'm gonna pay all my bills and that sort of thing because I didn't have the money to really do this. No, you got the money. Or I got this house, I'm trying to flip it, but of course I gotta pay a mortgage on it next month. 
or in two months. I got a month, I can pay, I got 60 days, I can do it, but after 60 days, if it doesn't sell, then what am I gonna do? Now you're in a bad situation. But if you create a stable base income first, then it's not a problem. And that's one of the things that wise advice does for you. That's one of the things that's, that lower risk investments will do for you. The, you do the lower risk investments until you have built a river of money, a river of gold, and then you can start increasing the risk for the higher return. Increase the risk for the higher return. It takes time. It takes time. And this is what our cab had, was doing. And after four years, four years, Algamish said, I wanna make you a business partner. I wanna make you a business proposition. And when he did, he went and he increased Algamish in money, his holdings, and he willed him into his lifestyle. And then Arcad continued that process and became the richest man in Babylon. It was a process. You have to be willing to go through the process. Lisa Nichols, she talks about how she was working, I believe 10 years, she kept sending herself checks to her uh, side, another bank account. And she would write on a check, funding my dream. She saved for 10 years, I believe, until she had it. And, and at the end of 10 years, I think she had somewhere between, it's either like 60 some thousand dollars or $120,000. It was something like that, that she had. And it was able to fund her dream, but she was willing to, to keep doing it for 10 years. We, we, people in America get irritated when they see immigrants who open up a store, a convenience store. Not knowing the story on a lot of these immigrants, immigrants is that they save for five, 10, seven, 10 years in order to do it, in order to open it up. Uh, one of my favorite marketers, Gary Vaynerchuk, he talks about how his dad and his family, they came over here. He was a, like a small boy, came over here. His dad worked for seven years, saved every penny he could until he was able to buy, the, buy a liquor store like the one that he was working in. Then he was able to buy it and then his family worked that liquor store and they worked it and it, it became a $3 million a year business. But he was willing to leave his country, come to America, then in America, save money for seven years, living in a one bedroom apartment, mother, father, children, all these in a one bedroom apartment for seven years until he was able to buy the liquor store. Then Gary himself took the $3 million a year business with a $14,000 a year marketing budget and market that thing until it became a $60 million a year business. And then he became, he started his marketing company. I say that because it's about wise advice. I get marketers coming to me every day, calling me every day, saying that they can build my business and make it a household name. Man, your popcorn is so good. It should be a household name. Everybody should know it. And you know, we got this program and we can blah, 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 blah. Show me the proof. First thing I say, show me the proof. Show me where you've done that. Show me where you've made someone a household name. Show me. I, I see what Gary Vee did. And he did that before he spoke a word about marketing. He, he did the work. So show me. Every time, every time I ask them, show me. Show me. Show me. If you can't show me, you can't talk to me. It's just like now for financial alchemy. If somebody call me and say, hey, I want to join your financial alchemy program. I want to build my credit and I want to learn how to build wealth. And they said, but I don't know if your program worked. Can you show me? I can show you my credit history. I can show you another person's credit history who's who would allow me. I can show you the credit history of me and other people who have used my process and my program and been able to build their income. I can show you, you know, financially how my company has went through its ups and downs and how it's going through its ups. I can show you these things. I don't mind showing you. It's part of the process. It's part of, now, you just can't call me and say, show me. Put a down payment. Show me that you real and you're just not somebody being nosy. Because some people are out there like that. Oh, I just want to see what I just want to see. I don't have time for looky loos. My time is too valuable for that, and so is yours. So, you gotta be willing to take wise advice. Be mindful of who gives you advice. Don't take everybody's advice, even my own, even this. You should go and you know research, research, read the book yourself, read it and come to you and understand it. But in today's world, if you don't build your credit, because your credit 
um, as we say in the um, Financial Alchemy Journal, um, DIY program, cash talks, money talks, but credit starts conversations. Credit starts conversations. Cash is not king anymore. Credit is. Credit. So if your credit is in the 400s, you need to be doing financial alchemy. Taking it from lead to gold. Taking it from the 400s to the 700s. But you gotta go through, be willing, be, be willing to go through the process. It's not gonna happen overnight. Those people promising you in 90 days, they're usually doing something that's, it'll, be, it'll throw it up, but then it's gonna go back down and you have to build it back up. I'd rather just build you up. I'd rather just build you up. Take a look at your credit. See what you need to do as far as cleaning it. See what you need to do as far as building it. And then learn my techniques so that you can keep it. What's the point of building your credit to a 740 and then all you're going to do is mess it up in a year or two? I want to teach you how to keep it there, how to maintain it. And that's what Algamesh showed Arcad. And Arcad was able to maintain it and become the richest man in Babylon. And that's what the purpose is, guys. The purpose is to build it and keep it. That's what real wealth is, is how much you can keep, how much can come in. Arcad had more money coming in than he could spend. That's real wealth. My goal is to have more money than I can spend. That's real wealth. And trust me, I can spend some money. I can spend it. And I'm sure you can too. Um, but not everybody is going to be able to follow. Not everybody can go with you. Some people are gonna walk away. Some people are gonna to listen to this video and think I'm full of crap. Guess what? Really don't care. Some people are gonna to listen to me and be like, yeah, go, you know, I need to work on that. And you know, I read that book and and yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get on my, I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna get with you. 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 Okay. I'm not, not hold my breath. Cause not everybody, I realize not everybody can go with me. Nobody, everybody, everybody can do it. And here's the thing, those who go with me, as we grow, there's some programs, there's some opportunities out there that we'll be talking about in private, that we'll discuss, that I will give you the roadmap for you to be able to make those investments. I am a student of building wealth, and I'm a student of what's coming. Now, what's here now, unless we can make some, we can make some money off some things that's here now, but what's coming, where are things moving, that's what we gotta be attentive to. So we can get ready. We can be already be there and be a part of where the real money is. Where the real money. We're getting ready to go into a recession, guys. Next four or five years, going into a recession. In a depression and in every recession, more millionaires are made during that time frame than any other time frame. We're getting. We're headed for another one. You guys better be ready. So I want to appreciate you guys. Continue to support me. Remember to free yourself to be yourself because greatness is non-negotiable.